Great, Fred. So we might as well pick up on that next point that you just said about biological efficiency. The next thing that uh, this person said was is that our brains require a lot of energy. And the statement that was made is that we're not going to get those energy needs for the body systemically and for your brain out of plants. So the conclusion is, well, from a question I came up with, can animal meats make your brain grow large? Can animal meats fulfill your energy needs? And on the opposite side of that, can a plant-based lifestyle supply all of our energy needs? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's another philosophical statement as far as I'm concerned. I mean, somebody should have told that to uh, um, Enrico Farmer. Um, Rico Fermi and Leonardo da Vinci, two of the most uh, brilliant people that ever lived in our history, and they were both uh, vegetarians. So I don't know for sure if they were vegans or not. I'm not. They, it's a, I, from what I understood, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was a, uh, a vegan vegetarian. So was Bernard Shaw. He was also a, a vegetarian. So as far as having to eat um, animal protein to have large brains, which people are equating to intelligence. Uh, <clears throat> I really don't think uh, that's based on any kind of a fact. That's based on abstract science and some kind of a supposition. Uh, again, using the experience of my research, there's no real science based on that. In fact, I see um, there definitely seems to be a relationship in our society today that the more animal protein people eat, the more they seem to have run into serious problems. But I don't think it's really a question from a... a biochemical standpoint of um, um, how much animal protein is good for you, how much is bad for you, how much we can absorb out of our vegetarian diet, how healthy is to be a vegetarian. The real problem today is we're eating processed food. No matter which direction you go in, if you decide to be a vegan vegetarian, if you eat no processed food, you connect all the dots, you can get all the nutrients that you need beyond the shadow of a doubt. If you have to supplement with a little body, vitamin B12, then there's nothing wrong with doing that. You're still going to probably end up being a healthier person, in my estimation. But if you, don't, you can't do that, and you want to eat some animal protein, the key is to eat grass-fed beef, organically grown chickens, fish without mercury, in moderation, not to excess. Because in the process of dealing with the nitrogenous byproducts, the waste products, the urea, all the waste products that come along the animal protein, which the ammonias, these things are hard on your internal organs. We just can't go what some primitive person did and look at their success without taking into um, consideration that they were living in a pristine environment, they drank pure water, they didn't smoke cigarettes, they didn't use tobacco, chew tobacco, they didn't eat any processed food. So based on wherever they got their nutrients that was clean, unchemicalized, of course they're going to be healthy people. That's why there was so much diversion in different cultures in different people that were eating different diets that lived pristinely that were very healthy. The reason was there was a common denominator. They left out all the processed food. In some respects, the debates that are taking place today in the, in the nutritional realm, it's really um, same old um, discussions, you know, being recycled. What we have to, the message that I want to get across to people today is stop eating processed food. Then it's your choice for, for, for moral reasons that you don't want to eat an animal. That question is, can I do that and still be a healthy person? My answer to that question is absolutely, unequivocally, yes, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Because there's loads of people that are doing it. I've done it myself. I've been doing it for 45 years. And I'm, uh, I feel absolutely fine. I'm able to function just like anybody else. Now, if the person don't want to do that, they're not interested in the... Uh, the morality of that, you know, that they think that, uh, you know, the way they're raising animals and the way they're being slaughtered for food and even um, with any other, you know, any other, it was a necessity for hunter-gatherers to eat animals. And everything was clean at that time. So they were relatively healthy people, but they had problems, the same problem that comes from, that along with eating too much animal protein. And the problems are not being directly looked at because some of the information, there are groups of people today that are recommending that you eat a lot of animal protein, you eat a lot of dairy products, you eat the cheese and all these other things, along with, uh, all the, uh, with, along with plenty of fruits and vegetables. 
And because everything is, is, um, is organic and everything is grass-fed or, or you know, pesticide-free or antibiotic-free, of course they're going to be healthy. That's the reason, because of what they're leaving out. But does that make it a superior lifestyle? No, it really doesn't. Okay, based on what you leave out, there's different cultures in the world that their diets are different. There's a lot of primitive people today that live in areas of the world, their diets are different. Of course, they're primitive, they run around half naked, they're getting plenty of fresh air, they're drinking pure water, um, they're hunting gatherers, they're eating fruits and, and, and gathering fruits and eating plants out of the jungle and eating some animals. They're healthy. The key is don't eat processed food. Try to eat as clean as you possibly can. And you eat a variety of different foods. I'm not saying a person should become a vegetarian, eat, eat whatever they want as long as they eat up, leave out animal protein. Or these people that try to convince people today, and there's a lot of people out there, that you should eat, uh, uh, <clears throat> your diet should be mostly fruit. Well, that's not, that's not a good way to go in my estimation. This, this, this is not new information. I saw, you know, 60 years ago, plenty of people did, did that. The Nature Boys, Johnny Love was them. They lived on mostly fruit. They started off the first five or six years like gangbusters, but guess what? They all ended up in a disaster stage 20, 25 years down the road. A lot of people don't have the long-term experience. They don't have the scientific knowledge. And uh, the key is to uh, take out of anecdotal information and try to think that that's a substitute for scientific knowledge and experience is a tremendous mistake.